Hello and welcome to this clip looking through uh, a question from the 2018 paper, quite recent, um, and it concerns making ammonia and the thermodynamics of the Haber process. So there's quite a lot of information, as you can see. Uh, usually there's some kind of context given at the beginning of every um, chemistry Olympiad question. So moving down the page, there's quite a lot of information that's actually been given. So I'll be using parts of this as I go through the question. And it's interesting, at the bottom it says the lithium hydroxide formed in step 3 can be reused in step 1 and the process can be repeated. This shows how this particular process might be more sustainable. So going on to the first question. It asks us to state the two half equations that combine to give that overall equation. So, what we need to do is identify the reduction in the oxidation. And uh, if we look at the lithium hydroxide going to lithium, let's do the reduction first. We can see that it's uh, lithium plus plus E minus giving you Li. And on the oxidation side, we've got 4OH minus going to 2H2O plus O2 plus 4E minus. So, this next part asks us to calculate um, some entropy data. It also needs us to go back to the previous page and use one of the um, expressions there. So it's a mathematical representation of the second law of thermodynamics which states that entropy um, tends to a maximum in the universe. So they want us to work out delta H, delta S and delta G. Now each of those terms in the expression or each of those particular measurements um, are actually uh, assigned a particular unit. So it's worth noting that the unit for delta G and for delta H are both kilojoules but the unit for um, delta S is joules per kelvin per mole. So the first calculation is based on the equation that we had on the previous page, so I've brought that over there as well. And you literally just do the total of the delta H of the products, uh, take away the, the total of the delta H of the reactants. So, um, it's not saying whether it's combustion or whether it's formation, um, so you don't consider the Li and the O2 as zero, as you might do if you're using uh, normal first year a-level chemistry, uh, thermodynamics, this time they haven't specified. So in this particular reaction, the lithium and the oxygen actually get a value, even though they're elements. So doing the same for delta S, you do the total of the product's entropy and the total of the reactant's entropy and take one away from the other. And that gives us uh, plus 427 joules per kelvin per mole. So at the bottom of the question, of the page on the left-hand side, there's some space. This is where I'm going to do the delta G. So adjusting for units by multiplying the entropy change by 10 to the minus 3, looking at the units at the top right-hand corner of the page, uh, that gives me a positive 1,004 kilojoules per mole to the minus 1. Okay then, now we need to go on to part C. And this also requires use of one of the equations from before. So I've cut and pasted a whole section of that page so we can refer to it here. So it asks for the minimum potential that should be applied in step one. So they want us to work out the electrode potential of the cell, so the, the cell potential, I should say. So rearranging uh, delta G um, equals minus NFE cell, so um, N is the number of electrons transferred in the equation with the cell reaction. F is Faraday's constant. And the cell potential is in volts. Now you'll notice they've said that one volt is one joule per coulomb. And for Faraday constant and the cell potential to be multiplied by each other or worked together in the same equation, we need to make sure that any kilojoules are converted back to joules. 
So if we label each of the components of the rearranged expression, that gives us a cell potential of minus 2.60 volts. But it says the electrolysis will only proceed at an appreciable rate when the applied potential exceeds the electrochemical cell potential by 0.60 volts. So the minimum potential that should be applied is 0 0.60 more than minus 2.60. So taking the absolute value as 2.60, the potential, minimum potential should be plus 3.20 volts. So working from the premise that the nitride ion is N3 minus, you end up with uh, 6 Li plus N2 giving you 2 Li3N to, uh, to do step 2. So this allows us to work out um, the, uh, for the formula, sorry, the equation for step 3 as well. Li3N plus 3H2O giving you NH3 uh, to 3 LiOH. So the mole ratio you're looking for for lithium to ammonia is uh, 3 to 1. So we can now move on to part E. So we're going to start needing to use the information in the blue box this time. So we want the mass of lithium generated in step 1. So going back to our previous equation, our reduction, we can see that the number of moles of lithium is equal to the number of moles of electrons. So we need to use the um, Faraday constant uh, to work out the number of moles of electrons. So the Faraday constant is, uh, the unit is coulombs per mole, and Q is the charge in coulombs. So dividing one by the other will give us the number of moles of electrons that have been generated, and therefore from that we can work out the number of moles of lithium, and then the number, uh, the mass of the lithium uh, needed. So using the Q equals I times T equation, that's also in the blue box, you can divide the Faraday constant by 0.2 amps times 1,000 seconds, which gives us 0 0.00207 moles of electrons. So that's taking into account the 88.5% 8, uh, yield for lithium production, gives us 1.83195 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, moles of lithium. So that gives us 0 0.0127137337 grams of lithium. Now in part F we need to work out the uh, volume of ammonia produced at room temperature and pressure in centimetres cubed. Now from our earlier work in part D we were able to work out the number of moles of lithium to number of moles of ammonia as 3 to 1. So applying that to our number of moles of lithium, that gives us 6.1065 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of ammonia. To convert that into a uh, volume in centimetres cubed, you need to multiply that by 24,000, which gives us 14.6556 centimetres cubed. So let's now go down to the final question. So in part G, um, they want us to calculate the total mass of lithium in tons that would have been, or would have had to have been produced to generate the required mass of ammonia each year. So per year, um, if we convert the number of tons of ammonia required per acre, into grams and multiply that by the number of acres, which is 130, that gives us 10.01 tonnes. So taking the uh, relative atomic mass values from the chemistry Olympiad periodic table, ammonia ends up as 17.034 grams per mole to the minus 1. So to get the, mol the moles of ammonia in 10.01 tonnes, you convert back to grams and divide by the grams per mole which gives us 5.88 times 10 to the power of 5 moles. Now, 
the number of moles of ammonia to the number of moles of lithium is uh, 3 to 1. So what we need to do to work out the number of moles of lithium is multiply the number of moles of ammonia um, by 3. Yep, yeah, that's right, sorry. And that gives us 1,764,000 moles of lithium. So multiplying that back up by the, uh, the molar mass of lithium, that gives us uh, 12,242,160 grams, which to three significant figures is 12.2 tonnes. So that takes us to the end of this clip. Hopefully it's been quite a useful one. It's got some good entropy stuff in there, a little bit of introduction to first year um, electrochemistry via the Nernst equation, and also some good moles and masses calculations as well. So thanks a lot for listening, and until next time, see you soon.